Pitstone 232. This is the launch director performing the final poll for launch. Verify no constraints and go for launch. Program chief engineers have no constraints and are go for launch. I have no constraints uh, and are go for launch. Weather has no constraints and weather is go for launch. You are looking at the world's most powerful rockets. Artemis One embodies the hard work of thousands across the world determined to explore for the benefit of all. After years of testing and talking and testing some more, Artemis I finally carried the dreams and aspirations of the world back to the moon. I knew this would be an exciting mission. I mean, we haven't left uh, low Earth orbit in over 50 years. Nobody on my team had done it. Most of them weren't even alive back when we did it last. It has been a culmination of many years of hard work. It certainly represents a lot of that design and effort that we have put in to build the first human spacecraft for NASA in over 50 years. It sent a message to the, really to the world, that we have laid the foundation for a generational rocket. We are not just going to the moon, we're gonna prove that we can live and work on the moon and establish an outpost on the moon for future distant exploration out to Mars and beyond. I'll never forget coming in in the afternoon and everything is just working per the timeline. And you're starting to feel like, you know, today might be our day. Great news, no constraints to launch. You know, I'm sitting on the console at my station and things have been pretty quiet and you know you start to get this sense like this thing's going to go this time and here we go in the wee hours of that morning of november 16th came it all fell together and the payoff was a launch that shook you to your foundation and signified that america was back on the road to the moon vehicle lifted off the pad. The windows began to shake and the building announces that that vehicle is flying. I was overwhelmed with joy and excitement, not just so much for me, but for the entire team, for the country. It was eye-watering. And I was tearing up. What an, an amazing accomplishment for this team. I'm still shaking a little bit. That never gets old. That is always one of the coolest things you'll ever see in your entire life. There's like, oh my gosh, this the adrenaline rush just hit you. And I knew this this is it. We're it's game time. We're 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 off and running now. For the first time in 50 years, we were breaking out of low Earth orbit to head toward the moon. Attitude for solar array deploy. Solar deploy initiated. Happy. Plot MPO for solar array release. After the vehicle uh, was put in its preliminary orbit, meaning Orion and the ICPS, we had to wait uh, for translunar injection, and that was a whole different game. Let's go have a good burn and let's go to the moon. Let's do it. Now, if you think about hitting a keyhole in the sky, it was all about that translunar injection burn from the ICPS. Without a perfect burn from the ICPS, we weren't going to the moon. We certainly weren't going in the right place. That little RL-10, the engine that could, went on and had its the longest burn it had ever had in the history of the RL-10 program, which goes back many, many years. SLS set us up for success. The launch vehicle and the insertion point was over 99% accurate to where they predicted. Orion is now flying free, attached to the European service module and on its journey to the moon. We had video from Orion shortly after the translunar injection burn was complete. Orion flipped around and we took pictures of the Earth and uh, I had no words. It was just amazing, amazing. The views of our blue marble in the blackness of space now capturing the imagination of a new generation, the Artemis generation. It was four days to cross the line of demarcation to enter what is called the lunar sphere of influence. 
and you could see the earth beginning to recede. Our first big burn was the outbound powered flyby, which is the one where we went right by the moon. Orion was actually on the backside of the moon, so we did not have communications with it. So we had to set everything up ahead of time. And uh, we lost the signal. We uh, waited, held our breath, said some prayers, and then sure enough, it came out from the backside of the moon and, and we were on our way to the distant retrograde orbit. Distant retrograde orbit, we're gonna be about 38,000 miles away from the lunar surface. Artemis I traveled approximately 268,000 statute miles from Earth. One of the really fantastic moments during mission was where we saw the first image of the farthest point that any human spacecraft has gone before. We see these images downloaded real time and we would sit in, uh, in the rooms and we would just pause the meeting. We'd pause the discussion, go, look at that picture. It's almost unreal. They really represented as if we were there on board the spacecraft, looking at the moon and looking at the Earth, our home. We're continuing to get some spectacular views from the Orion spacecraft. Orion now has its sights set on home. NASA's newest moon explorer, now less than two hours away to complete its shakedown mission. When you hit the Earth's atmosphere, entry interface, we did what we call a skip entry, where Orion bored down into the atmosphere for a period of time, then it popped out, and then it skipped uh, upwards of uh, it was thousands of miles. And if you don't come back into the atmosphere with accuracy, you will skip out of the Earth's orbit and not be able to return. And we did that intentionally because we wanted then to come back down and do a second heating cycle. We're coming back into the atmosphere, basically a double heating to really stress the heat shield. It's hard not to hold your breath when all of that's happening because I'm thinking to myself, if this doesn't go well, what do I do? What do I have? That was the major objective of Artemis I. We had to prove that that heat shield would be rock solid to sustain a crew, because if you don't ablate the heat, you're done. And there it is, high over the Pacific, America's new ticket to ride to the moon and beyond now in view. Finally, on re-entry, uh, that was a culmination of that 25-day mission that we waited with bated breath to make sure our baby came home. Splashdown, Orion back on Earth. And when it hits the water, everyone just goes. It's just a, a rush to get to the capsule as quickly as we can. And so the teams, they feel the sense of urgency. The small boats move, the helicopters move, we're taking imagery from the air. We handled the recovery capsule like it was a, a fragile egg. We wanted to make sure that the heat shield got all the data that they needed, that everything, all the mechanisms were preserved. From Tranquility Base to Taurus Litro to the tranquil waters of the Pacific, the latest chapter of NASA's journey to the moon comes to a close. You could sense a sigh of relief in the flight control room in Houston, knowing that our job was complete, we had brought Orion home successfully, and set the stage for grander things to come in the future. It was a testament to the hardware but it was a testament to the teams, all of the teams that had a hand in bringing that hardware together. We learned so much about how this vehicle is gonna operate and we proved that it is ready to put humans on board. For Orion and for Artemis, this is just the starting point. Next thing is getting ready to fire the crew on Artemis too. Ladies and gentlemen, your Artemis II crew. So, waiting in the wings, Artemis II. And now, the humans are getting on board. Thank you to the NASA workforce. Thank you to our industry partners, everyone in Europe that's working for this. America has made a very deliberate choice over decades to curate a global team, and we are going to the moon together. We need to celebrate this moment in human history. It is the next step on the journey that gets humanity to Mars. Am I excited? <laughs> Absolutely. Initial reaction to that news was just intensity. Finding out was a humbling experience for me. Shocking is the best word I can say. Disbelief, 
an immense sense of honor and responsibility. Putting the first four crew members on Orion is what I'm so excited about. I want to hear the stories about what it is like to live in the Orion spacecraft. We're going to test out the vehicle's ability to conduct rendezvous maneuvers, crew's ability to actually fly Orion manually, and most importantly, we're going to test the environmental control system. We got humans on board. We got to keep them safe. We got to keep them breathing. And then we're going to have them come back at that high speed entry of 32 times the speed of sound to make sure that they can survive this for future missions. It's very exciting to fly crew, but it's also daunting, right? Because these are people and they're putting their lives in our hands. This one needs to perform and will perform as good or better than the first one did. And so we have new launch commit criteria. We have changes to our procedures, changes to our timelines. We have new systems for crew. We have new systems in the capsule. We have an emergency egress system. We have new recovery systems. We want to make sure that we've gone through those time and time again so that when launch day rolls around, we're, we're ready for anything that the hardware may throw at us. By building incrementally these capabilities, improving these capabilities that we have uh, through the Artemis campaign, we will be able to live on the moon and be able to perform science that is very important for deep space exploration. I am ready for Artemis II. The SLS team is ready for Artemis II. We are ready for Artemis II. We are ready. We are ready. All right, I'm ready, let's go. And for more NASA videos, hit subscribe.